our first venture outside of the Bronx, but it wasn't a good reception uh, that we had. In fact, at that time, Coney Island, and especially the boardwalk and where the rides were, the Polar Express, the uh, Tornado, uh, they were havens for gangs grouping up from all different parts of the city. And the biggest of all the gangs that had an enclave in uh, Coney Island at the time were the crazy homicides. Later, gangs were replaced by crews. But in all that time, the 70s, 80s, and 90s, the place to go if you were gangbangers in the summer is to hang out in the shadow of the cyclone, uh, the roller coaster, and prey on people. So they were a menace to society, and we had decided that we were going to give Coney Island a badly needed colonic. When I started the Guardian Angels officially on February 13th of 1979, I thought we'd be earning the Congressional Medal of Honor. I just felt nobody was really doing anything. Everybody was gripped in depression, a lot of anxiety. I said, look, I'm single. I don't have a family. I have to ride these trains. I'm coming from Brooklyn, which was renamed Crooklyn, into the Bronx, which was the belly of the beast. Why not give a try and begin uh, patrolling the trains late at night? when we've closed the McDonald's and I'm on my way back to Brooklyn. And for years, we began to patrol as we do every time this season, right through the summer. And then on Easter Sunday, we had a patrol out. And prior to our being out on patrol, a uh, gang of thugs, young black youth, began to prey on other young black youth and began to stomp them into the asphalt. And it was the Bloods gang that was going on a rampage. This was five o'clock at night on Easter Sunday. And we were able to acquire the video from the Bloods gang because naturally they were sharing it amongst one another. Hey, look, we nearly killed this guy. Hey, Bloods rule, Bloods in, Bloods out. So we took the video and we went to DCPI, which is the public relations outlet for the NYPD. And we took it to the nearby precinct, the 60th precinct in Coney Island. Said, look at this. Look at these guys. You can see their faces. They're clearly identifiable. Oh, this didn't happen. Uh, they used a Trump-like statement. This is fake news, altered facts. I said, were you kidding? Uh, how do you know that this occurred Easter? How do you know it wasn't done by the gangs just as sort of like a recruitment film? I'm saying because our patrol rolled up on it after it had finished, and we took the video. We downloaded it from a blood cell phone. No, 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 you're making it up. The reality is they didn't want the perception that gangs were beginning to encroach on Coney Island as they do every Easter season to try to claim turf. And then two hours later, there was all out mayhem in Coney Island. The police said publicly, oh, some bottles were thrown. People thought it was gunshots. We had to clear the area, close Luna Park, Coney Island earlier than normal. People fled for all the train lines at Surf and Stillwell. But that was all bogus. And then the next day, I decided to release that video. It went viral, over 100,000 hits. All of a sudden, the Bloods realized we had stolen, we had purloined their video, so they took it down. But luckily, one of our members, Crazy J, our patrol leader in Coney Island, uh, he had secured the video, and uh, there was no denying it then. So since then, there have been eight arrests made. They're still looking for four other perps who had almost killed this young black male. And they had all cameras there. Apparently, either they're placebos or they weren't working that day because they could have easily have it, had it on film themselves, both the Parks Department and the NYPD. And there were witnesses, but the witnesses were terrified. They knew it was the Bloods gang. And the, law, uh, the uh, uh, analogy of the street is snitches get stitches and end up in ditches. So nobody was talking except they were talking to us, and we were able to blow it up, and hopefully justice will be done. I would not refer to myself as a hero. All I am is one person who's made a difference, and there are a lot of other people out there who make a difference every day. We just don't know who they are. They don't get the same attention and the recognition. This is all primed to take advantage of the fact that we know people out there want to make a difference. They just need to be able to figure out how they can and the Guardian Angels uh, have presented a way for them to do that.